What's up, Fever Fam? Hi. Welcome back to the pod. Um, it is Saturday. We've just like been in the ocean. We've had a great day. Lucy's here with us. Sanchez is leaving oh. us alone today. Love that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sanchez, just for you newcomers, is um, the yappy little chihuahua that has a love-hate relationship with me. So, um, today, <laughs> we are talking about uh, being tested and that you're going to be presented with the same, what did you call it, dynamic, whatever that is, mm -hmm. um, over and over. And it's actually, what I was considering today is that like, it, it sucks badly mm. um, when the same thing you've been through over and over bubbles up again, but it's such a growing opportunity. It's actually a gift. It's actually a gift. It is. Um, because what happens is if you don't go through your weakness, whatever that is, for me, right, it was giving into the same type of men, which were usually the exact same type every time. Um, charismatic, tattooed, love bombing, then disappear, ghost, treat me badly, whatever, whatever. So me being represented again and again with that is an opportunity for me to eventually gain faith in myself that I had the ability to say no, that I had the ability not to fall back into that old pattern. Um, and so someone was asking me yesterday about breaking the cycle, but it depends on what your thing is. There's multiple different dynamics. Do you want to talk about an example of another one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think in terms of breaking the cycle, um, breaking any cycle mm. comes with, and I think what the most important thing to prepare people with, and this is only like, and I'm going to try and explain it in the best way that I know how, but I think the most important thing to prepare yourself for is you are going to be presented with, so the universe keeps sending you the same lesson mm -hmm. until you learn it. It gets harder. And what does learning mean? It means Choosing a different response that doesn't put you back in that same cycle. So it's the uncomfortable response in the beginning. It's fighting everything in you, really. Um, and I think that, yeah, what people don't talk about is this idea that when it comes time, when that cycle starts again and you're presented with an opportunity to either heal it or stay in it, mm. it feels exactly the same your body doesn't know the difference between what's real and what is imagined mm. and past feelings so you take your whole past dynamic your past cycle past pain you can take this back to like you know childhood unmet needs fulfilling that cycle that's kind of where it begins that entire dynamic you are literally just going to put onto a new person in a new situation and it's going to feel exactly the same all the dynamics are going to come up it's going to feel so real and i think this is where, you know, a part of what we teach on our courses and what we're so passionate about is, is arming people with the tools, the awareness, the self-knowledge and, and, you know, really empowerment to be able to clock that when that happens. And instead of going straight into reaction, falling straight into the old cycle, to be able to go step back see what's going on so you kind of zoom out mm -hmm. like a bird's eye view yeah that's a great way of putting it yeah because you're yeah. like you're watching the experience and we talked about this in the last podcast it's like watching a train crash about to happen mm. but this time you're not on the train this time you can be on the train to... though that is the choice is you can yeah. get back on that train yeah and this is why we often keep cycling and keep repeating it because we get back on the train mm -hmm. when we don't have the tools yet to be able to go, I'm not going to get back on the train. I'm going to watch the train go past and I'm, it's going to feel like I'm on that train, but I'm not. And it feels so empowering. Yeah. Afterwards. Mm -hmm. After when it, all the dust settles and you're like, I didn't do it. I didn't. You gain a little bit of confidence in yourself. What was the really you just did the other day? Oh, it was so good. It was, it was so about um, trusting yourself. Do so many on trusting yourself. No, <laughs> you do. But it was just about... Um, yes, Lucy. Yeah, it was about respecting yourself. And, oh, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, what you know what I'm it? talking about? It was, so, about? it was a good one. 
It was a, a good one. Solid. I'm just, let me see if I um, can pull that yeah, up. Yeah, pull it up. Um, but yeah, it's about um, learning to trust yourself a little bit more each time. And each time you do, it's more empowering. And the thing is, what you can't unknow what you already know, right? So the thing that is really cool is that once you are given this knowledge, once someone says there's poison in the chocolate, you, you can't go back and eat the chocolate in good conscience. You know there's poison in it. Before, maybe you didn't, and you know, that's life. But then once someone tells you, and that is the thing about knowledge, it still tastes the same, it still looks the same, you still want it just as much, but you know there's poison in it now. And you can't <laughs> unknow that, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you just, you can't, you cannot lie to yourself, you can't not lie to other people, once you know, no. you know, and you, you are much less likely to fall back into un, old patterns when you are now aware, awareness, awareness, awareness. You are it aware is. that there's poison in the freaking chocolate. Don't drink <laughs> the Kool-Aid. Don't like drink the Kool-Aid. Maybe, yes, yes, yes. The self-confidence one. No, uh, you were on the couch. You filmed it on the couch. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm just going to jump in here while she looks for it. And... I think, you know, we have this term in recovery where they say you can't use successfully on a head full of recovery. And I think mm. it's the same for your self-empowerment, self-improvement transformation, your wellness transformation. You know, when you are transforming yourself into an elevated, like your highest self, an elevated version, you stop living in the shadows. You stop living in the lies and in the in-betweens and the gray areas because being authentic demands full light. Mm. Embracing the full shadow, the darkness, and living in the light. Combining the two. Everything has a shadow, okay? Everything casts a shadow. It's owning that. It's being who you are. There's no gray. There's no, like, living, you know, hiding behind things. And essentially, this is what we're asking of you. Step into your authenticity. This is what we're asking from ourselves. Because when you taste that Kool-Aid, when you start to, you can't... As she was saying, you can't unknow it. You can't go back. When your eyes are mm -hmm. open, you can't close them again. Mm -hmm. uh, you could. It's very hard, though. Um, and I think that's what I see happen so much in, you know, with addiction. Actually, with addicts is why people relapse. Is It's like you can't unknow recovery. You can't unknow your healing. And I think why it gets so bad when they go back to using if, if people relapse is because... The pain is just so great and it is so much that you need more and you need more and you need more to try and make yourself forget, but you never forget and you end up just living. It's just a vicious cycle. I've gone off on a tangent here. But I, it was, you were sitting on the couch and anyways, saying something magic, saying something magic. But yeah, the, yeah, the point is that it was about, um, respecting ourselves and that you have to trust yourself first in order for anyone else oh to. that i was lying upstairs on my bed i said you can't think about this okay so here's a great analogy if someone if in order to trust yourself you have to stay consistent and stay yes, committed. yes that's what it that's was it. Yeah, yeah 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 you yeah. have to stay consistent yeah. and committed because you're not going to trust someone else who says yes. I i'll meet you at seven you have to keep your <laughs> own promises yes yeah. so good Go on, go on. I'm just really into <laughs> Will it. Will you trust someone who keeps letting you down, who keeps making a plan and they never show up? No, you're not going to trust them. Eventually you're going to go like, no, thank you. So what makes it any different with yourself? Ooh. This is what I was saying. Ooh, so it good. doesn't make it any difference. If you commit to yourself, then you keep showing up. If you say you're going to gym five times a week, you do it. Otherwise Otherwise you're going like to start it. trusting yourself. Yeah, and then you stop yeah. trusting yourself. And then that, when you stop trusting yourself, it, it just gets into your self-worth yeah yeah it's like a what are those beetles called <laughs> from the office <laughs> about a weevil a weevil was it a bed bug a I weevil beetle i don't know but it, bo it buries in there and it's yeah not, um, and you don't want that so a no, simple practice and an important thing is be realistic with yourself mm. right don't put these crazy expectations on yourself to be like i'm gonna show up at the gym three times a day yeah. For you know, because you're gonna end up that's unhealthy, it's unhealthy, and you're gonna end up being disappointed in yourself and losing mm. trust for yourself. So, set realistic goals, yeah, and meet them and prove to yourself that you're so capable. Um, because you are, yes, you are. So, that's a little bit of breaking the cycle. Um, mm. 
Mm -hmm. We have a workbook and we subscribe to our monthly program and then you'll get the workbook and you'll get more and more and more. Yes. We are here to help. Like that's just here to help. Yeah. Okay. Join the wellness revolution. And free, feel free to message us if you have questions specifically about going through this or any other topic, and we will do our best to answer. We will. Thanks for listening or watching. Bye. Ciao.